The affirmation occurs when we say, his walking around. The negation occurs when we say, he does not walk. Affirmations and negations can be classified as universal or particular. A particular affirmation is, some pleasures are good. The corresponding particular negation is, some pleasures are not good. A universal affirmation is, all that is shameful is evil, while the universal negation is, nothing that is shameful is good. Among these propositions, some are categorical, while others are hypothetical. Categorical propositions are straightforward, such as, all that is right is good. Hypothetical propositions involve consequences or uncertainties. A syllogism is a discourse in which one deduces a conclusion from initial premises. Syllogisms can be categorized as categorical, hypothetical, or mixed. Categorical syllogisms contain simple propositions as both premises and conclusions. Hypothetical syllogisms consist of hypothetical propositions. Mixed syllogisms combine elements from both types. There are three kinds of categorical syllogisms. 1. In the first type, the common term can serve as either the subject or the predicate. 2. In the second type, the common term appears as the subject in both premises. 3. In the third type, the common term appears as the predicate in both premises. We refer to the two terms of a proposition as extremes. For example, in the proposition, man is an animal, man and animal are the extremes. Mixed syllogisms draw conclusions through logical consequences. For instance, if unity is universal, finite, and has a beginning, middle, and end, it possesses a figure. If the antecedent is true, then the consequent must also be true. A perfect rhetorician is someone who thoroughly understands the faculties of the soul, the varying capabilities of individuals, and the types of speech that suit different characters. This person knows precisely what qualities a speaker must possess, which speeches to use, and which minds they can persuade. Moreover, a perfect rhetorician can identify favorable moments to speak. Such mastery of rhetoric can rightly be called the art of effective communication.